In this video we're going to look at the basics of colour and I'm going to start right from scratch. So the first thing we're going to do is have a look at the toolbar. And at the bottom here we have the foreground and the background colours. So in this case red is a foreground colour and yellow is the background colour. If you wanted to change that to the default of black and white, there's two ways you can do that. You can either click on these this little box here, so if I click on it, it changes it to black and white. Or what I could have done is just press down the D key, and that would have also have made my foreground black and my background colour white. I can also alternate between these two colours by just clicking on these arrows. So if I click on this arrow and it says there, if I hover over it says switch foreground background colour. So if I click that, white becomes my foreground. Again, if I click again, black becomes my foreground. So let's open a new document. So I'm going to go File, New, Blank File. And if we have a look, we as well as the size and what the background looks like, we also have the colour mode. And we have RGB colour, we have grayscale, and we have bitmap. Now what we want to have almost all of the time is RGB colour and that is the the default setting so let's go OK but let's have a look and see what the other options are so if I go to the internet and I've pulled up the Adobe website here here is an explanation of the four kinds of modes that you can have in Photoshop Elements so the first one here is the RGB mode and that stands for red, green and blue. If you put red, green and blue together in equal amounts you actually get white. So this is the first one, RGB colour, which is the mode of choice. Then you have index colour and basically it's 256 colours. You might need this if you're doing some sort of web design. You, you seldom need it. Then you've got grayscale mode and you might find that if you've scanned a document in that it might be in grayscale mode and we'll have a look at changing that. And the last one is a bit mode and as you can see it, it is very bitty. So the one that we want is the RGB colour. So let's have a, let's bring up a picture and I'm going to bring up one that I've looked at before. If you have a look, now how do I find out what my mode is? So I can go up to Image, Mode, and you can see there that RGB colour is actually ticked. And if you bring up pictures that you've taken with a camera, this is the colour mode that will, which will come up. I can change that to grayscale. And what happens actually is I lose all the colours. So let's go OK. So now it's purely black and white. And if I decide to use, uh, change the black and white colours over here. So if I pull up the colour swatch panel, I'm going to dock that. I get the blue line there and I just dock it. Now if I change any of the colours, I'm going to choose the purple here. You'll notice over here it still shows me black and white. So it doesn't matter what colours you ch choose here. It'll only show you a, a grey scale of what that colour is because we have chosen grey scale. So if I wanted to go back to RGB mode or if I've got a photocopy which is uh, a grey scale, I go to image mode and I change it to RGB colour and now anything I do from now on will actually you'll notice where I had grey here we now actually see the yellow that I chose on so from now on we can we can put colour back obviously when I converted it to grayscale I lost the colour I can't get those colours back but I can now add colours so what about if we want to change the foreground and background colours. Well, we can go to the colour swatches over here and we can click on these existing 
colours. So I click on the blue, we get the blue, and then if I click on the pink, we get the pink. But we can do a lot more by actually clicking on the foreground colour box here. But so, if, so if I click on this, and it did say set foreground colour, I get this box, and there's a lot I can do with this box. So let's first look at the first three options that we've got here. And the first one is Hue, the second one is Saturation, and the third one is Brightness. So this little bar here will be whichever one I've got highlighted, and the default is normally the Hue. So if I move these arrows down, this will change the hue. So we've got red, pink, blue, etc, etc. If I then move, you'll see there's a circle here. If I move the circle in the big box here, you'll see that it's I've got 100% saturation. If I move it across, it becomes less and less saturated. Let's go back to 100, or let's go back to 19, a little bit less. And then if I want to decrease the brightness, I go down. And you can see now the brightness is 57. But I could change these around. Um, so I could decide, right, I'm going to now click on this one and it means the saturation is shown here in the bar so I can change this is now changing if you look here I'm now changing the hue by going across and I change the saturation by going down here and the brightness again is by going down. So the last bar is brightness. And so I've got now hue going across, saturation going down, and if I want to change brightness I change it on the bar. But the easiest is just to keep it on hue. So just remember this, it's the default is that it's on hue. This is where you change the colors. If you want to change brightness, you go down. And if you want to change saturation, you go to the left. So I'm going to change the color to, let's say, that color. Okay. Now another thing, if I click on it again, we've got down at the bottom here, R G B, which stands for red, green, and blue. And the last thing we have here is a hex number. And this is very important if you are if you do any sort of web design, because you can get a colour here, or even if you, you find a colour that you like and you want to use it again, you can write down that hex number. And so if I just copy that, if I highlight it and I press Control c or Command-C to copy it, okay? I then go back here, and I'm going to change, I'm going to go to the color swatches, change it to green, but if I then click on this, highlight this, and I go Control-V or Command-V, I can paste in, and I can go back to my original color. So often, if you're a web designer, what you'll do is you'll find the colors you like and you'll write them down. So whenever you're designing something for the web, you can always go back to those original colors. So these three boxes show you the amount of red, green, and blue there is in that color. So if I was to take this and move it right to the edge, You'll see I've got red, green, blue in equal amounts, and that gives me white. And that is the hex code if you want to get white. It's six Fs. What about black? 
let's see what black is. So black is no red, green or blue. It's six zeros. And that's the basics of colour in Photoshop Elements. In the next video, we're going to look at saving our own colour swatches.